All right, guys. Well, we might uh, kick things off, and, and I start with a big thank you for uh, late notice and everyone uh, rolling up today. So thanks for coming down to the MCG, and a special thank you to all Daisy's teammates that are here, here, our uh, AFLW players that have come down to support um, Daisy as well. As you know, uh, we're here today um, to make a club, but also um, Daisy will be making an announcement. Um, Daisy and then our Premiership coach in uh, Mick Stanier will be here with Daisy as well to answer any questions and uh, if you want to do any uh, photos later on. So um, a big thank you for everyone coming down. As I look to introduce Daisy to come up to uh, the microphone, it's a bit of a hard one to know where to start to introduce someone like uh, Daisy, and I'm deliberately not going to try and upset her. I, I know it's a big day today, but uh, Daisy's been such an important person for the Melbourne Football Club and for the AFLW competition. Uh, where do you start? You go back to the fact that Daisy's been playing at the highest level for the last 18 years. At Derebin, where she was playing 10 premierships, uh, she went on to then be the first player that the Melbourne Football Club selected when they were building their um, first AFLW program and, and Daisy was not only selected as a player but as a leader of the program that played a really important role in building the player group, the off-field team, the culture, the standards, the performance expectations and along with Mick and um, you know I think we know the amazing journey that uh, these two have been on together over the last seven years, um, culminating in the Premiership just a couple of months ago, um, along with others, but these two have been the two key drivers of that program. Um, at Melbourne, three Premiership, uh, three uh, best and fairest, three All-Australians, four times voted by her peers as the most uh, influential and best uh, club captain. Uh, she's done so much. Every single game that she's played, she's played at the, uh, the highest standard. In some ways, it could be easy to forget the impact that she's had off the field as well. She's been a leader and an, an ambassador for this club now for uh, seven or eight years, even before she played her first game here. And no doubt, I think we all recognise that she's been a great ambassador for the AFLW competition. Um, along with other peers, drove the AFL to bring the competition in earlier than what they were planning. Uh, she's been a great uh, mouthpiece for the competition to make sure that it gets the profile and the respect that it deserves. And there's no doubt that that's rippled out into young girls playing in community football. So as I introduce Daisy, and, and along the way over those um, seven or eight years of amazing on-field and off-field performance, we can't forget Daisy also left for a year to go off and have her two gorgeous kids that are playing up the back there, uh, Roy and Sylvie, uh, who have then just become her personal cheer squad. And I think you've all seen them at the games. They've struggled at times to concentrate through the four quarters, but have always been top performers singing the song after a big win and have become uh, part of the DNA of our AFLW program. But I think as I introduce Days now, I think the one thing that I think she would hold closest to her heart, um, and that is uh, being referred to as the reigning AFLW Premiership captain. I think that's something that she's been obsessed with and, and has worked so hard to achieve over such a long period of time. Um, so if you could put your hands together and welcome to the microphone, Daisy Pearce. I wasn't aware that I would actually have to announce it myself, but um, <laughs> I was hoping Purdy might say it. <laughs> um, but yeah, we struggled to iron out a few of the details in the seven year contract that we were trying to negotiate and uh, instead I'll be making my retirement. Um, and yeah, closing the chapter on my playing career with a very full heart, um, not just because we ticked the premiership box in the season just gone, but because of a career that I've loved and cherished. So yep. <laughs> I'll miss um, the whole program and the players and staff and people that I've got to share the journey with immensely. 
um, and that's probably been the hardest thing in making the decision. I think there was a bit of an assumption that it was win it and I'm done or <laughs> lose it and I might have to consider going again but in fact um, the satisfaction of last season and the enjoyment and the, the closeness of the bonds that we've now formed, um, it actually made it a bit more confusing and harder to step away. So it's its probably been one of the, the harder decisions that I've ever had to make. Um, but now that I'm here and I've been able to say it out loud to, to Mick and a few of my teammates, um, yeah, I feel like it's the right decision. And it probably mostly came down to the fact that I just had this feeling of um, contentness inside me that is a new feeling to me as a football player. I think no matter what's happened over the journey, um, content has never been something that I've felt. Uh, so as the, the weeks ticked by post-season this year and um, whilst there were definitely little spurs of thinking about going back to back and <laughs> um, getting on the bike and feeling myself get swept up in goals and what I was chasing and what averages of power I was trying to hit and all of those normal athlete feelings that kick in, there was also an element of, yeah, just an overall satisfaction and feeling like that chapter of my life um, is a full one and I'll take away some, an amaz some amazing relationships, um, memories that will last a lifetime and a real excitement and optimism about what's next um, for me and for my family. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to that, but it's been a, an emotional time getting to this decision, but... I mainly just wanted to stand here and say a massive thank you to uh, my teammates and everyone that's been a part of this program for making it just uh, the best thing to come and do four days a week or all the other bits in between and to Mick um, for just setting an environment that's just been so enjoyable to come and play footy at. Um, I was thinking about it this morning, you know, to have a coach that you know, we can share in the greatest friendships and you know take our kids to the snow and we spent the week off in between our um, first final and the prelim at the skate park in, in Fairhaven like to have a relationship like that but to come to training every single time and have this feeling in my gut of oh wow well, I don't want to let this guy down and I better keep improving for him to be able to strike that balance of great mate but um, motivator and uh, mentor is just what makes him such an amazing coach and I'm just so grateful um, I think he's a big part of why I have enjoyed this this chapter in my life so much because of the environment he creates and how much I've learned off him not just as a player but as a person as well and a parent <laughs> I'm trying not to look um, at any of them <laughs> but yeah it's with a full heart that I make this decision and I'm yeah, sad at the moment. It's been a mixture of emotions, but I'm definitely looking forward to redirecting some of my energy um, into other parts of my life, one of which will be my amazing family, Benny and Roy and Sylvie, who are up the back, who, um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure and the, the greatest reward to share this journey with them. Um, it's been challenging at times, but that's, I guess, where the greatest reward comes from is the hardest stuff, and it's definitely been a hard journey for us logistically and emotionally and um, I just thank them for their sacrifice, hey bud, their sacrifice and support along the way um, and yeah it's just been so special to be able to share so many memories with them and not just grand final day last week but we had them on three interstate trips along the way and just to share all those memories with them it, it'll be just so so special to look back on in time and yeah. I'll finish by just saying a massive thank you to those that I've thanked and also our footy club. As Purdy mentioned, I've been around here for nearly a decade if you include the exhibition series prior to AFLW coming along. So um, they're people that I've known and um, worked with for a long, long time and it's just been a great place to come and come and work at and live out a childhood dream really to play AFL footy at the highest level. and. You know, the colours might change over the journey, um, but, yeah, I, I'll hold all these relationships dear and hope that, you know, other than the colours changing at, at, at times, that, um, yeah, the other bits won't change too much. So thank you and thanks to everyone for coming out and for Mick for being here in case I couldn't get a word out. <laughs> um, and, yeah, thank you.
So questions now, guys? Before I do, a deep breath enabled me to just think of a couple more people to thank. To um, Nikki Craig and her family, Ben, Harry and Millie, who um, ha has helped me out with management. Um, and Harrison and Jan, who are part of her team. Harrison, in particular, on the ground here, putting up with my poor ability to return emails all the time. And, um, yeah, helping me to set up and maintain great balance off the field as well with my other careers. I think that's one thing I've reflected on this week as well is um, how grateful I am for that the team behind me, um, including Ben and the kids, but those guys as well have um, been really important to me, not just in a work sense, but Nikki as a mum, um, just sharing some of those late night text messages exchange that, um, you know, effortlessly flow between big business decisions and then what time did your kids go to bed and how crazy were they today? So that's been something that I've really valued and that's been so important to me. Um, so a big thank you to them. But yeah, it's it's good that I've, I've finished this point, I, you know, with the emotions of losing a big part of me and something I've loved so much, but um, grateful that I've worked really hard to maintain balance in the rest of my life so that I'm not in a period of great uncertainty and wondering who I am now. I've got some wonderful opportunities ahead of me thanks to some hard work and some great support from family and that broader team. So thanks to those guys and yeah, um, thank you. Sorry, Pen. So questions for Mick and for Daisy. Well done. Thanks again. Just. What you, you talked about weighing up the decision and get back and forth. What was the clincher? What was the moment where you you really had that sense of content that you knew that this was it? Um, I think it was just reflecting on how I've always been in this off season, like um, every season, and and I'm ref going beyond the Melbourne career, but back at Darabin as well. Like, wouldn't have mattered if we'd won the premiership or individual awards and that kind of thing. There was always this just deep desire to want to keep improving and wanting to go after more. Um, and that was that was still there. Like I said, there were there were flashes of that. Um, but there was just an overall satisfaction and a want to, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be an ambitious person, but I want to redirect some of that in, in other directions in my life. Um, give a bit back to the family. I'm, I'm mindful to say that because I don't want it to sound like um, a family decision or that I'm I blame's probably the wrong word, but that I'm not pinning it on the need to go and be a, a good mum because I feel like I've hopefully been able to do that anyway. But um, and it's not all been sacrificed from their point. Like it's been hard work at times, but it's been an incredible journey that um, Ben's enjoyed and the the kids have gotten so much out of as well. But I think it was just that overall contentness, and then also a bit of reflecting on what my personal standard is as a player. Like there was enough of me that was ready to move on to other things or a bit in doubt about how much I'd be able to give. And I'm someone that's always given 110% and I didn't want to be an influence, you know, floating around the footy club, content with where I'm at and going off into the sunset, enjoying my footy whilst I could have done that. I don't think I could have quite met my, my own personal standard of chasing and I think um, this is a group that's capable of long-term success and I, I think it's going to require 30 players that are hungry and chasing and I couldn't convince myself that I was going to be that so it was a bit of that that I, I finished up the last week of my footy career absolutely loving it like I remember stepping out of our last opposition meeting just scrawling notes and like all in thinking uh oh I still love the meetings <laughs> um, but to, to finish it loving it um, and, and knowing that I could have gone and enjoyed it because it's been an amazing outlet for me. It was just, yeah, that little piece of not knowing if I'd be all in. Um, and that was enough for me to, me personally, like I think if I wasn't that, I wouldn't enjoy it as much as I did. I could quickly go from loving it to not being able to convince myself that I'm the athlete I want to be um, and also not wanting to have that influence on a group that I think um, is really capable of, of long-term success, which I'd, I'd be so proud to sit back and watch. What about saying it? I imagine when you first <laughs> said it to Ben, how'd that go? Yeah, first said it to Ben. Um, it's, it's been tricky because there's a lot of time <laughs> and no one's wanted to put any pressure on me. So we went away on a family holiday and my, I tried to create some pressure 
for myself and said, when we get back from Port Douglas, I'm going to know. <laughs> it took a little bit longer than that, but um, yeah, it was hard saying it out loud. Ben's been really mindful to stay right out of it because, you know, whilst he's got his hopes and dreams as well, he didn't want to put on any pressure and would have been supportive either way. Um, but yeah, I think the hardest one to say it out loud to was Mick, but uh, we shared one of our many phone uh, car phone calls, which have been, you know, a big part of our relationship over the years. Me driving back to Bright, him driving back to Anglesey, and you know you're both going to be on the road and jump on the phone for an hour. But um, yeah, this was an hour long conversation of a different kind. But as soon as I said it out loud to him, and he was just so supportive and optimistic about what's next, and reassured me that I had, you know, nothing more that I owed anyone. It was kind of like made it feel like the right decision. And then, of course, saying it over and over again to the different teammates was hard again. But, um, yeah, even though it's hard to say, it's, it makes it feel more right the more times I say it. When did you I'm, actually come to the Oh, this morning. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I screwed up the, the little speech that I might say if I backflipped, no. <laughs> um, no, I could be back yet. Uh, <laughs> um, a really good friend of mine, I was talking to Hamish McLaughlin yesterday as well and his wife reminded me that you can always change your mind. <laughs> so, uh, no, nah, I think it was maybe about a week ago that it, it felt real. Or when did I ring you? A couple, maybe a couple of weeks ago now, but yeah, I've had a bit of time to allow it to sink in before I set it out, out publicly so that I was sure of it. But yeah, I think it'll help now that I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I can commit. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> You're trying to make me cry now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the hardest bit. Like, um, you know, the, the friendships you form and this is a special group of people. Like, I've always loved the footy club environment, but the older you get and the more little communities you form, whether it's at work or as a parent and that kind of thing, it makes you realise that not just footy clubs, they're, they're, they're a unique environment, but to have one where you can come and bring your whole self somewhere, um, that's pretty special and it's not something you get everywhere else. Like, I just keep thinking, one of the things I'm, I'm going to grieve the most is I'm a 34-year-old, soon to be 35-year-old mother of two, and I can go there and carry on like an 18-year-old. <laughs> so that outlet um, is something I'm really going to miss. Um, and just the friendships, like the ups and downs shared, like these people, I've been through breakups, I've been through pregnancies, I've been through parenting, I've been through losing grand finals, um, and that's just my side of things, I won't go into all the stuff they've dealt with, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, and then you get to go out, pull on a jumper and, um, give your all for a couple of hours on the weekend like it's a it's a special thing to be a part of and I say to everyone you, your footy friends there's nothing no one like your footy friends like and that's something I'm so aware of and I'm so fortunate that I'm going to be able to stay in footy and and um, stay connected to the game and get a little taste of that hopefully through my coaching as I'm t as Mick tells me and reassures me but um, I also know that there's nothing like playing it and there's nothing like going through the grind of a pre-season and wins and losses and th those couple of, you know, minutes or the hour in the change rooms after the game, I think that's the bit that I'm going to miss the most um, and it's these girls that make all of that so enjoyable. Is there something, something you won't miss in the pre-season or <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, the 2K time trial. <laughs> won't miss that. <laughs> I'll miss the feeling of having completed it though, but um, yeah. There's not much I, <laughs> I won't miss, to be honest. Even that, like, yeah, it's just been such an amazing outlet. Like, even the bits that aren't fun, the, the soul searching when things aren't quite clicking for you that we had to do a bit of this year. It's all part of the journey that I've, I've loved so much and gotten so much out of. So, um, yeah, one of the things that made this year as enjoyable and satisfying as it was wasn't just holding up the cup at the end of it, but it was a really tough year, like, some of the things we went through as a team and um, some illness on my side of the family. It was just a, a hard year. And you share that with um, this group of people and then come out of it with having achieved what you've always set out to achieve as a group. And it was just, 
everything I could have asked for. So um, that's why I just feel content. Yeah, it was, it was a couple of sleepless nights leading up to today to try and describe what Daisy's been able to do as a player and the impact she's had on, on our club and, and the competition. And I still can't find the words. But um, as a player, just a unique uh, game awareness, like just a step ahead of everyone else. And um, yeah, just unmatched in the competition for how she reads the game and sees the game. Um, plays with a, a competitive spirit um, that is so inspiring to those that watch and um, whether you're a Melbourne supporter or not, um, but certainly for teammates, like in clutch moments in games, just knows what to do. Uh, and I, I think the leadership side of things, which is so rare, can really nail her own performance, but goes out of her way to support and inspire others to play and execute their roles. Um, so not only can she maintain a high level of performance, but she can extract that from others um, and get so much joy out of watching others succeed. So uh, I know from a coaching point of view, like you, you couldn't ask for a better leader and captain and someone that's able to inspire and, and promote the growth of others. But um, yeah, I, I'm going to miss watching her play. Uh, you know, it's pretty unique when, yeah, some of the things that she can do. She's played every position on the ground. I think she's uh, even had a ruck tap earlier in the year, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, can play any position of the ground and has such a good understanding of the game. Um, yeah, it's been a joy to watch her play up forward at the back end of her career. Um, uh, yeah, growing up a, a midfielder and then doing some hard years as a defender, chasing some speedy forwards. But then it was been good to finish as a forward and, and really lead the team from the front. And um, yeah, we, we couldn't have asked for any more. Uh, and I, I guess you. Yeah, Daisy's AFLW career coinciding with the, the formation of the competition and the start of our women's program to have now left a legacy and a big um, imprint on our culture and how we go about things and how we move forward. Um, that, that's brilliant. And not just our women's program, but the club as a whole. Um, she's definitely shaped um, our whole footy club in her, in her 10 years here. And um, she's really set us up for success moving forward. So she can't have done any more. Um, what about you? Yeah, I, I think um, Daisy was on the interview panel when I first went for the job, so I've got Daisy to thank for actually being here. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, we've, we've both wanted to win right from the start and with a number of us as well. Like, there's a number of players that have been here from the beginning and, you know, we, we came short plenty of times and the soul-searching was there at the end of the year. What are we going to do? How are we going to get better? And um, just to share that whole journey together and there's been, yeah, there's been so many highs, but there's also been a lot of lows and... Um, yeah, we've both got young families and um, got yeah, a really good friendship that extends well beyond footy. Um, so that, that's not going to change. I, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll just we'll miss the playing component, getting to work together on a you know, pretty regular basis. Um, but uh, it's a great opportunity for Daisy now. To, and she's not lost to footy, which I think is the most important thing. Uh, she's got a genuine passion for the game and love of helping and developing others. And, and now she's entering another phase of her, I guess, footy story. And um, she's going to get a lot of joy and a successful follower. I've got no doubt about that. So I'm excited for that. And we'll, we'll get to share the next chapter together, I'm sure. But um, yeah, absolutely love working together. And um, yeah, Daisy is, is the, had the greatest impact on our, on our program, our culture, our on-field success and performance. And, um, there was time during COVID where um, Days and Ben um, went back to Bright um, and set up there and there was those moments of, <laughs> are we going to be able to get her back? And logistically, I think the last three seasons have made no sense at all, but um, she's just found a way with, with Ben and extended family to make it work. So, you know, I've just cherished the last couple of seasons knowing that, um, you know, at any stage she, she doesn't owe us anything. It's, um, it's been so good and then to have the season we did and be able to share that with the whole group and um, I think it's just great reward for someone that's given so much to to our club to the women's game and to the game of Australian rules football so um, it's been a good um, full stop on Daisy's chapter as a player um, and there's more exciting things to come. In terms of that legacy piece Nick, I mean, we can often be sort of blamed for rushing into you know, talking about naming things after people and all sort of things like that but it has been a conversation that's been had about Daisy for a while now. But listening to you 
you just talk about her and the impact she's had on the club and, and sort of the wider game, it, it sort of feels like it, it would be fitting to you know, be talking about Daisy in, in years to come and, and her impact on the club. Yeah, well, I know she'll have a continued impact on our on our program and in our club and how we how we go about things. Like the uh, Daisy's approach of, of hard work, always looking to raise the bar, but then blend it in with this selflessness. Um, it's quite rare. So that um, I guess those behaviours and those um, character traits that'll live on through through our players and our our leaders and how we aspire to go about our business. So um, whether there's um, the opportunity to name things or titles, I guess that. Um, that'll be out of my hands and beyond uh, our control. But um, the more important thing is, yeah, the impact Daisy's had on on our people. That'll that'll carry on, and even the next generation of players to come through, they'll I'm sure they'll be the club will make sure they're fully aware of Daisy's um, impact and commitment to the club and how she went about her business and and how we're going to um, continue to move forward. You mentioned that the next chapter that awaits her in different colours. Keep those car phone calls going, maybe to maybe try and coach her back. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm sure we'll be able to be able to share a lot of coaching stories <laughs> moving forward and, and support each other. I'm sure that won't change. But yeah, no, I am genuinely excited. Like yeah, Daisy just said, she's had a decade here at um, this great football club, and um, she gets the opportunity to go to another one now to learn and advance, and um, yeah, learn in a different environment, and um, that's a, that's a great opportunity and one we fully support. So um, yeah, look forward to sharing. Uh, a few stories and um, she knows this group like the back of her hand so I'm sure I'll be leaning on her in the future too. Daisy, um, given, given you started at Darabin, Darabin, uh, eight years ago, what does it mean to you to, to see Daisy now with a club like Darabin and professionalisation of women's football? Oh, it's like probably the most rewarding thing of my whole career. Um, there's times where, you know, I look at Talia Gillard who's um, standing over there and think, <laughs> Gee, I'm envious of these 18-year-olds who are starting now and, and get to enjoy, you know, 15 years from this point. And, you know, I can get a bit green with that and wish that that had been me. What could I have done? <laughs> but um, that's quickly replaced with just feeling so grateful and lucky to have lived across both because I, I think that's been unique and rewarding in itself. So to have been the 13-year-old who thought I'd played my last game of footy because... There's just no opportunities for women, not just playing the game, but in the industry. Like, I'd, I didn't think I'd touch football again, really, other than as a supporter. So, yeah, to, to, to be that kid and now to be winding up an AFLW career that's been just so fulfilling and have ongoing opportunities in the game, including, you know, commentating at Channel 7 or the, the coaching opportunity I have... You know, all of that's not lost on me of how far the game's come and that's just me selfishly talking about my own situation but little things like when I walk into Coles on the weekend and you see a little girl with her mum or dad fully kitted out wearing footy boots inside the supermarket, mud on her knees and that's just normal. She's, she's just been playing under 10s with all the other girls and there, there were three ovals of it or... You know, you walk along through a park um, on the weekend and look on one side and you, are they boys or girls? And, you know, just even that that question comes through your head, all those little moments where you realise how far it's come. Um, it's just been awesome. And I'm, I'm mindful not to take <laughs> any credit for that. Um, I'm just so thankful for the, all the pioneers that I've just been able to get in behind and, um, yeah, grateful that this has happened in my lifetime. I, I sort of remember a period of time of thinking one day there will be an AFLW competition, but when I first thought that, I didn't think I'd get the opportunity to play in it at all. I thought it might be after my playing days were done. So, um, yeah, just super fortunate. Looking forward, is the senior coach perhaps the next aspiration? Oh, I, I haven't... You know, I'm, a, I'm an aspirational and ambitious person and I'm sure at some stage... Um, goals will emerge but at the moment um, yeah I'm not putting any kind of end point on it or any ceiling I reckon I could learn and I do I, I mean I get out to a junior club every now and then I could learn something coaching the under 12s at the moment so um, I'm just looking forward to getting into another great footy club like the one that I've been able to enjoy playing in and learning in off all the coaches that are around me and um, yeah, being a good observer and a good listener and learning as quickly as I can and yeah, 
in terms of where I end up or what the the ambition is, I'm I'm not clear on that right now. I'm just um, being mindful to live in the moment and enjoy all these moments I've I've had in this chapter, um, and then start working out the the strategy and all my little scheming ideas after that. <laughs> Are you starting straight away? Um, oh, I've been again really fortunate to have had full support from Geelong and Melbourne. Um, it's been a conversation that's been happening um, between me and Melbourne and me and Geelong over the past 12 to 18 months, as you, as you know. Um, unique in the sense that it was public because of the applications for the um, female coach acceleration program. Like, it's not a unique situation to have a player retiring and <laughs> going to work at another club. I guess it's a bit unique because it became public couple of seasons ago when the, the applications for that program's deadline came up but yeah it's so lucky to have full support and encouragement from Melbourne um, who just want me to reach my full potential now as a coach as they've always wanted me to do as a player um, and also Geelong as well not putting any pressure on me to um, make any decisions too soon or Let's be honest, their, their organisation's going to get on just fine, regardless of when I get down there. But, um, yeah, so it'll be a matter of just enjoying and closing this chapter properly before we start ironing out exact details of start dates and that kind of thing. But um, the biggest deadline is Roy and Sylvie starting kinder on <laughs> Feb 2nd. So we've got to be um, settled down somewhere then and it'll probably be up there. But um, they've been really encouraging of me just taking time and arriving there when I'm ready not because I feel like I have to be there on any great date so um, let the dust settle on this decision and um, close the Melbourne cha playing chapter and then get down there after that. Maybe this season? Yeah I think it'll be this yeah. season yeah. yeah. Thanks Days. Thanks. Any, any other questions for Days or Mick? Can I just jump in um, for Mick? Um, obviously Yeah, I think a, a love of the game. That, um, yeah, that, that drives everything, I think, and then combine that with genuine care for people and an ability to, to build and establish relationships, whether it's with um, CEO or president, uh, an 18-year-old that's just got drafted um, in the media industry as well, like her ability to work with people. Um, and in coaching is, is just that, your capacity to work with people and help get the best out of them. But um, Daisy gets genuine joy out of watching others develop and improve and um, she's going to get so much satisfaction out of coaching doing that. But And also just a relentless pursuit to want to be the best in, in what you do and, and not just her personally, but the team. Like She's very team orientated, so um, she'll be driven to, to see any team she's involved in succeed. So um, it's a, all those things blended together, yep. Um, she'll be a great coach. So, and yeah, and excited for that that journey to start now. I mean, it's, it's sort of been starting unofficially for the last couple of years with the work she's been doing as as captain and educating and developing and growing our program. So, uh, but now she doesn't have to worry about pulling the boots on. Um, can just focus on coaching and supporting the team. So, um, yeah, exciting time ahead for days. Thanks, Mick. Great. Right, thanks, guys. We'll head around the corner just behind thanks, this pillar for some photos.